PB125, does it work? I know what you're thinking. What the heck is PB125? Uh, well, it's a dietary supplement. It's an antioxidant uh, supplement that's touted to uh, increase something called NFR2 and decrease another thing called T-bars. Again, I know what you're thinking. What the heck is NFR2 and what are T-bars? We're going to talk about that and, uh, and a few other things related to PB125. This is a supplement that I think you're going to be hearing about in the uh, not, so, not so distant future. And I also want to com compare PB125 to another product which you may have heard of called ProTandem and try to see how they might be different and see which one might suit you best. So before we go any further, again, what are T-bars? T-bars are essentially an indication of free radical damage in the body. Uh, as fat gets attacked by free radicals, it becomes rancid, and it, and it causes the production of these things called T-bars. Now, what do T-bars stand for? Yeah, it's a long word. I'm not even going to take a stab at it. I'm usually pretty good with science-y words, but that's one that uh, I can never pronounce correctly. So let's just say they're called T-bars and leave it at that. Another name for T-bars, uh, which you may come up with if you do your own research, is called lipid peroxidation. So some people may actually get their T-bars tested by their doctor, and if that's the case, they're looking for the lipid peroxidase test. Okay, but their lipid peroxidase T-bars, same thing. Essentially, what we're looking at here is if you ever did get your T-bars tested, the lower the T-bars, essentially the less free radical damage in your cell and the better off you are, okay? Higher T-bars means essentially more free radical damage and that's essentially the gist of that. Now, what the heck is NRF2? Well, essentially, NR NRF2 is a protein that regulates our internal antioxidant defenses, like, for instance, glutathione and superoxide dismutase. These are things that we make that battle free radicals. So, in other words, anything that activates NRF2 might mean we have better antioxidant defenses to beat up the free radicals that, that might invade us and do us do us harm. So again, in other words, uh, anything that increases NRF2 should make, make T-bars go down, which in theory, again, means that we have better antioxidant defenses. So the PB125 supplement is different than other antioxidant supplements you've heard of before, where you take the antioxidant, you get better. No, no, no. With PB125, they're saying, no, we help you make more of your natural antioxidant defenses by ramping up that thing called NRF2. That in turn allows you to do a better job yourself at battling free radicals, or as it's often called, oxidative stress. Oxidative stress, free radical damage, they all mean the same thing. Okay, so what's the research on PB125? Well, I went to their website of the company. The company is called uh, Pathway Biosciences, and they do make reference to a, an investigation of nine people who had elevated T-bars. In other words, elevated levels of free radicals in the body, more oxidative stress. And they noted that after people took PB125, their levels of their T-bars decreased. And I, and I looked at that and I said, well, that's quite interesting. It, it did not appear at this time to be a published peer-reviewed clinical investigation. And I said that because there's a lot of things they didn't tell me uh, on their website. You know, who, who were these guys? How old were they? How long? How much PB125 did they take? How long did the study last? So there's a lot I couldn't really discern from just the website. So it's quite possible this might be eventually published as a, as a clinical investigation in a medical journal. Uh, as, I, as I speak these words today on October 1st, uh, they, they don't appear to be, but um, I'm going to keep up the date on this on my personal website, uh, supplementclarity.com, and put a link to that in the description. So uh, if it does become ever published, I'm going to update the website. Now, as for other studies of PB125, again, again, I'll basically say that as of now, there does not appear to be any published clinical studies. I could not find any searching clinical databases. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean there won't eventually be studies because one of the things about uh, this Pathways Biosciences company is there really are real, real scientists behind this, uh, PhDs, MD, PhDs, et cetera. Uh, and, and so this is, uh, this, they are the real deal and, and uh, and so I have no doubt that they will be doing some studies in the future. And, and I do believe they might have some stuff in the pipeline as of right now. There's press releases out about PB125 of how they're uh, doing some, some work with the National Institutes of Health and even the National Institute of, of, of Aging as well. They seem to be studying this PB125 uh, dietary supplement. Um, and so it, eventually there's probably going to be some research, but as of right now, as I speak these words, I can't find any, but again, uh, eventually they're probably going to be out, of, uh, out, out and published in medical journals. Now, 
let's take a look at the ingredients in PB125 and see what we can figure out about them, okay? So it's a pretty simple uh, dietary supplement. We've got three ingredients. We've got rosemary leaf extract, and the extract that they're really talking about here is something called car carnosol, okay? And they've also got another ingredient called ashwagandha, uh, which again, you may have seen in other dietary supplements. It's quite, it's quite popular these days. Uh, they are making a specific point that their ashwagandha root extract has, uh, uh, is, is, is is, is measured for the potency of something called, and I'm going to butcher this word too, uh, withhaferin, and withhaferin A, and I know I probably ruined it, uh, but that appears to be the extract that they're using. And then the other ingredient that is in PB125 is luteolin extract. And luteolin, I brought up, brought up back, I want to let you know, luteolin is not the same thing as lutein, um, but luteolin is a, is a phytonutrient found in a variety of foods such as spinach and, and lemons and carrots and even green tea and oregano. Uh, again, and so that, that's another one of the, uh, the main ingredients uh, in this product. Actually, the only three ingredients. There's only rosemary leaf extract, ashwagandha, and luteolin extract. Uh, and again, you can see that They've got 68 milligrams of rosemary leaf extract and 23 milligrams of ashwagandha and 9 milligrams of uh, luteolin extract. Um, I have seen various studies on each of these compounds uh, as they relate to elevating that NRF2 protein. And so um, I do believe it probably will do that. The research that I did see on each of these, however, was limited mostly to uh, laboratory animals and isolated cells. So my, my, the question that I would want to see answered is, how do, they, how do they react in a human being? I'd like to see uh, if these things could actually raise that NFR2 and lower T-bars in human beings in a published uh, clinical study, which again, uh, I'm hopeful that eventually those, those studies will be published. Now, I became aware of PB125 when somebody asked me, how does PB125 stack up against to, uh, per tandem? Which is, as far as I know, the very first supplement uh, that was touted to uh, reduce uh, T-bars and elevate that NRF2 uh, protein. So um, I, I got curious and I did a little research. It turns out the head of Pathway Biosciences, Dr. Dr. Joe McCord, actually used to work for per tandem. Uh, he doesn't anymore. He's got his own company, Pathway biosciences. But here is a quick overview of how PB-125 and Pertanum stack up against each other. So we, on, on the left, we've got PB-125, rosemary, uh, ashwagandha, luteolin. And on the right, we've got Protandum. Again, one capsule of each. In Protandum, we've got some different ingredients. Milk thistle, bacopa extract. Again, there's that ashwagandha uh, extract as well. And green tea and turmeric. So how are they different? Well, um, number one, they both have ashwagandha in, in common. So that tells me that that's a pretty important uh, nutrient for both of these things as they relate to elevating that NRF2 compound. Uh, the other thing I would say is Pertam has been around a lot longer than PB125, many years longer. And so they actually have several clinical studies on Protandum, noting that it does a variety of different things. And I'll put a link to my Protandum review in the description so you can check it out. I analyzed all the research on Protandum and broke it down into mouse study and test tube study and human study, et cetera. So you can, you know, at a glance, get an idea of the lay of land in terms of the Protandum research at this point. Um, but that, that's another difference between them. They, one has more studies at this point. PB125, again, will probably have some more in the future. Uh, and a, another difference I would say is that PB125 is a little bit less expensive than per tandem. Uh, a month of PB, PB125 is only going to cost about 25 bucks, and that's not too bad as dietary supplements go. Uh, a lot of other supplements I see cost a lot more than that, so that's that's not too bad. Uh, per tandem also has a multi-level marketing aspect to it where uh, people can become independent distributors and sell it on their own. At this point, PB125 does not appear to have a multi-level marketing aspect to it, although in other countries, there is a version of this being sold called PB123, um, which there is a multi-level marketing aspect where people become distributors. That may eventually happen here in America. It, it, doesn't have, it isn't so as of right now, but again, who knows what the future holds. Um, the big question that I would have for both PB125 and Britannum is, uh, I, don't, I have not yet seen any head-to-head -head studies that compare them to each other. 
together. Which raises NRF2 the most? Which lowers T-bars the most? And at this point, I can't tell you either way. So I don't know which would be better, uh, unfortunately, at, that po at this point, uh, stage of the game. So let's, uh, let's, let's see what future research, future research says. Um, a, a few FAQs about this, frequently asked questions about PB125 you may be curious about. Does PB125 raise that NRF2 uh, protein? And I'm going to say, I, I, yes, it will. I believe it will. The ingredients do tell me that they will, will do it, at least in isolated cells and in laboratory animals. Whether or not PB125 raises NRF2 in human beings, let's see what the studies show, okay? Right now, I'm not so sure. Uh, probably does, but again, I, I'm, I'm only as good as the research I can see, and I wanna see some people studies on this stuff. Is it made in America? And absolutely, PB125 is made in America, so if that matters to people, that's great. It does to me. I like seeing supplements made in America. Uh, how, many do you, how many capsules do you take per day? And it's only one, so this is not something you gotta take four or five capsules a day. One a day is all they're recommending. And why do they call it PB125? This is a personal question of mine. Uh, well, PB stands for Pathway Biosciences, and that's the company that makes this dietary supplement. As for the 125, I'm not sure. I added up all the ingredients in PB125. It only came to 100 milligrams. I, I'm not sure why they call it that. So uh, that's that's a question that maybe somebody can answer to me. It, maybe it was just picked at random. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Another thought about it is uh, that you may be curious about is this is a patented supplement. There is a, uh, if you just Google or Bing PB125 patent, you can read the actual patent. Um, so it is a patented uh, dietary supplement. That also makes it stand out against a few other supplements out there. Um, so at, does PB125 work? And I'm going to say, I'll put a question mark for right now. I want to see the human research. I'm intrigued by anything that might lower uh, oxidative stress and maybe reduce the risk of disease. But again, I want to see the data on this. I want to see the, the, the real research on people. What, what happens if you take it long term? You know, does it make you, you know, live longer, live healthier, et cetera? And the answer is, I don't know at this point. Um, I'm always intrigued by this. So I'm going to keep, uh, keep an eye out for the future research and I'll update uh, as more research comes to light. But hopefully this PB125 review has given you a better idea of what it is, how it works, and, and stuff like that. So if, if you guys have any questions, drop me a comment below, and I'm glad to help you uh, figure out as much as I possibly can. And I'm also going to put a link to my entire PB125 review, which is gigantic, by the way, uh, in the description, along with my review of Protanum as well. So that's all I got for you right now, guys. I am Joe Kennan. Have yourself a fantastic day.